So, I am going to teach you something known as star classes. Star classes are the definition of stars, but it's not through names, it's through basically um like making the definition through letters and numbers of dividing stars into groups and we're going to see how hot at least a star needs to be so it can heat up the earth to a little temperature. So first we are putting the earth right here because that's where it is astronomical unit from the sun and now we need to grid off so that we don't lose crack okay so um right now we need one of my saved objects because I saved this for the experiment I'm going to do today. Uh, Alright. So is the... Okay, edit. Don't need to do anything anymore. Now this is in the center. So as you can see, the year says at the livable temperature of 13.8 degrees Celsius. Now I want to slow this down to see what happens. And then we're gonna start going through the classes of stars. So we are already at a minute per second. And the temperature hasn't seemed to drop, but it will with time. This is going to start dropping in probably days per second. So look right here, 13.6 degrees Celsius in seven days. So, the rate at how the temperature is decreasing is always increasing. Wait a minute, did I do anything wrong? No, I didn't do anything wrong. I thought it was flying out into the universe. Okay. So, the temperature is dropping towards the 12 and oh okay um yeah i have something to fix this auto orbit and now we don't have anything to worry about so we need this to keep orbiting forever. If it doesn't, then I don't know what I'm gonna do. So as you can see, it is way out. Farther than like 66 AU. No, it's 6.68 AU. I thought it was like 66. So 
about 6 AU, or 6 times the distance from the Earth to the Sun, away from this red dwarf. Now our Sun red dwarf is 3618 Kelvin. What we want to do is um, put it at 3500 Kelvin or somewhere. So right now, this is how far the Earth is. Right here, that's the distance. So now we need to start increasing the temperature. So if I want to see what happens to the Earth, I can do this and open multiple views. Okay, so now I can go to the sun, and I'm going to label it red, uh, red, Now this is also known as the M-class stars. If something is a V, it is a dwarf. Now, technically, a V is not used in the um, red dwarfs or the colors or the temperature. So, V can be used in the number or luminosity class. So, this star is a M V star. Up oh. M V. <laughs> okay, so here we have a red dwarf at 3,591 Kelvin. So as you can see, right here it is 29.8 degrees Celsius. Here it is 43, negative 43 degrees Celsius. If it were 43 degrees Celsius, then that would be like a lethal fever. Stars. So, 
is a very small star, which means it's very new to the cosmos, and that's why it's producing all of these visible solar flares. Like, right here. This right here is a solar flare. Indian Earth Sandbox. Now there is one thing that I probably have never done before, and it's landing on the surface of objects. To do that, you need to double click an object, and then after that, click C, and you will land on the surface of the object that you double clicked. So you can see a solar flare right there because I'm looking upside down. the surface of the objects in Space Engine, but Space Engine has a limited number of objects. It only has 200 trillion objects. In Universe Sandbox, you can create infinite objects if your computer is good enough. So, to get off the surface, you press C again, or if you want to barely get off the surface, you can click W. So let's zoom out from the solar flares and see if our Earth warms up. So, um, oh, I thought that was an elliptical orbit right there. Wait a minute. Hold on. Whoa. It fluctuates every time. Okay, so I want Celsius, so the white is the hottest places, and the black and blue are the coldest places. Okay, it kind of is. Like, it's farther away here and closer here. So that's probably why the temperature fluctuates. Every part of the orbit. Now it does get some water. So... Yeah, apparently an orange dwarf could actually be a home for humanity if something happens to the Earth. So we're going to keep increasing the temperature until we are at 5,000 Kelvin. don't have an orange dwarf for a K-class star. Instead, we have a yellow dwarf or a star that's like the sun. Now, uh, the mass of the sun is around 1,000 this has a slightly smaller mass than the sun, and it's almost, well, it's probably 
probably not even the same size. But that's because our sun is not the exact start of the yellow dwarf. It doesn't provide that much heat to the ears. Now it does get barely to a degree Celsius. So you could live here if you lived in the white regions. And in the cold regions, it is negative 65. Wow. I'd advise you to live in Africa and Antarctica. In this world where the sun's ranked by like 20,000 kilometers. Wait a minute. Did it? Oh, it was 200,000 kilometers. You don't want to be. You want to be in Africa or parts of. Uh, Antarctica in a world where the sun shrank by 200,000 kilometers. So we can keep increasing the temperature. Un oh wait, I forgot to put a name for this object, so I'm going to name it a Oh, also, these are the Z-type stars, so... Wait, no. Oh. They're called Yellow Dwarfs, so... Yellow... Dwarf... And now I'm just gonna put type instead of type star so G type so we right here have a G B oh wait So we can keep increasing the temperature and oh boy it's 50 years a second so you'd probably only live for two seconds. So they would probably wouldn't even be able to go in school because there would be too much would be less than a millisecond. Okay, this is this is ridiculous. I just need Okay. There. So we need to keep increasing the temperature. So it's seven five Kelvin. Like five seven seven five Kelvin is the temperature of the sun, or five thousand seven hundred seventy five Kelvin. So this is close enough. It should start heating up the Earth because it is um oh it's because of the mass. I think like I don't know. Okay, so I am going to compare it to the sun, and it's a bit smaller, it's a wee bit smaller. So, 69550. Now I have 
have the mass of a, of a thousand forty two Jupiters. So, why isn't the Earth warming up? Because I made this star like the size of the sun. Oh, I think I get it. Oh, it's getting closer, I think. Like, it just entered the edge of the blue zone. So, it said... Okay, I just need to delete yours. So, now we need to put an Earth here. Oh, that's still, that would be bad. Because if it were still, still it would end up crashing towards the sun. Okay, delete, that's still too far, for life, I think, I don't know. So, technically, I need to the moon here. And now the Earth is 13.8 degrees Celsius. So, everything is normal. And people can live on Earth. With a star like the sun. But we're gonna still in increase the mass and temperature because there are types that are far beyond size. It might be even at a size where basically the Earth gets swallowed up by the type stars. I'm going to search something. So don't worry if it's a bit silent. Okay, while I am searching, you can figure out for yourself if you don't want to wait. Okay, I know. So, um, I have brought up the Hertz Front Russell diagram on my iPad, and I'm using my computer, so, um, you won't be able to see this diagram, but you can if you use Wikipedia. So first, we are on a D2 star. Pretty much like it's a TV. So... Uh, 
this is the star that the that the Earth orbits around, and it's a wee bit hotter than the sun, but nothing will happen because it's like only 10 degrees Kelvin hotter. I thought nothing would happen, but it's already 20 degrees. Oh, wait, what? If, what's the maximum temperature? Okay, the map. Uh, yeah, um, that's not good. It's almost approaching seventy degrees Celsius. So really, the temperature is rising a lot. But we're not done yet, because this is up to the sun. I'm going to create a scale that will show you how to create. So I am going to just find the certain stars. That I think are good enough. So, um, now there is a classification for stars called brown dwarfs, which are technically what not what normal people would consider stars, but what I think would be a brown dwarf is. Like, one of the brown, like, I think this planet right here, 51 Pegasi B, I'll rename that. It's not 51 Peg B, it's 51 Pegasi B. So that is 51 Pegasi B. Now it is a brown dwarf star, which isn't big enough to actually create nuclear fusion. Now nuclear fusion is what makes stars look like this. It makes stars look like this. Right here. That's what makes stars look like that. So Wolf 359 is a brown dwarf that's kind of close to our solar system. So now um, I am going to place the sun right here. Then you have B types, B 
Hold on, what did... <laughs> this is ridiculous. Oh! Finally. I think that is a good scale. 